the next thing we'll want to do is create a list of products if we're going to make an invoice solution we're gonna to have to have something to sell first and um, so we will have to make a table for that um, I had been thinking a little bit about what I could use and I kind of came up with the idea that I would have a clothes store so I would just um, as my products add all kinds of different kinds of clothes doesn't really matter what you do or what you choose or what kind of uh, business you have your product is the item that you're selling and it can be anything so let's make a table called products let's get in there and let's do as usual start with an ID which is a number and let's double click that right away so we don't forget to make this a serial number now every product has its name so product and that's a text field we will also be adding a description again a text field we could say that um, all our uh, products belong to a certain category because then we can kind of sort them a little bit in a logical fashion later on for my products I was thinking maybe shoes but also dresses and pants and those are all different categories so um, if we think about fashion and, and stuff we might have certain fashion that's for men and certain thing, things that are for women so let's add a gender field um, that would uh, be male or female that's a fun thing we can play around with uh, what else do we have it's gonna have a certain price now with products there is always going to be a difference between the price that you pay for it yourself so the purchase price and that's gonna be a number field and there will be a price that you sell it at now how do you come from the purchase price to this sales price there is going to be a markup so we can you make a field for that and that markup could be a certain percentage now in fashion um, it could be that the markup is usually kind of the same so we can always kind of start by um, having a standard value filled in and um, the markup is usually going to be a certain percentage now if you want to calculate with percentages we're going to have to use um, we can't just put in 10% but we'll have to put in 0.1 that's how you work with percentages uh, in percentages if you just use 1 that's 100% 0.5 is 50% 0.2 is 20% uh, 0.01 is 1% uh, 1 so if we enter 1, 0.1 that'll be 10% as a markup looks pretty good uh, that way we will always have a mark our standard markup filled in and we can always change it uh, later let's do a sales price you do have to pay attention to this because if you auto enter this data it will automatically be entered and there will be a value in there and then you might not notice that that is that that markup is something that you have to think about because for some products that markup might be different you might want to change it and if your markup is different a lot of the times then it's maybe better to just leave this one empty so that you can see that there is an empty field that you still have to fill in because that's always the risk with auto entering data you might be entering data that is not correct that you might forget to change because you see that there is something in there so you just move on to the next field so that's something to kind of keep in mind uh, as you design your tables here um, a sales price is not is going to be a calculation so it will be the purchase price multiplied by the markup so let's make this a calculation and then let's create this one and FileMaker will ask me what I want I want the purchase price multiplied by the markup and that will end in a number that will result, result in a number so that's uh, how you make this um, what else will we be needing we might be adding a picture of our product so that will be in a container field okay this is looks like it's a kind of a good thing to start with we can kind of get going with this and then we can see if we need to add any fields later on we can always still add them so let's click OK let's see if uh, FileMaker has created a layout for me that's looking good so I've got my table here and what I always like to do and I've told this before let's uh, look at this one again I always like to put my tables here 
so that my table view is available and then I like to put my layouts separately. So this product, I'm going to put this product one as a table view and I'm going to create, let's go in here really quick to create a new layout which will be my um, product layout. In fact, what I actually usually do is I go to File, Manage, Layout and before we go any further I'm going to quickly organize these. I'm going to put my products with my tables here. These tasks or uh, also a table and I'm gonna add a new folder for my lists and this one for instance I've got my list contacts here that's a list I'm just gonna add that one in here as well so that I have my contact list my task list in my lists so if, as you can see you can grab this one and drag it left and right and then it kind of goes in and out of a folder and that way everything is nicely organized and what I usually do because I've got this one can now go back into browse mode and like a table view because I'm in my products table here because in my for instance in my contact layout I've already got a few buttons set up on the top and I kind of like to keep that uh, layout what I usually do and what I think is a bit simpler is to just copy this one and then make uh, the changes to turn this into my product database. So I'm going to go to File, Manage Layouts. I'm going to duplicate this one and then I'm going to double click it so that I can edit it. And this will be my lay products. And this will be based on my products table. And the rest is probably looking pretty good. Okay, let's close this one. Let's go to Layouts, Lay Products. Now this one is, of course, looking exactly the same as my contacts. I don't want it to look the same. I'm going to delete this entire thing because I don't need it. Yes, I'm going to get rid of these fields as well. There you go. But now at least these buttons stay the same. I do have to pay attention that my show list button cannot bring me to my client list. So I'm going to go into button setup and just do nothing for now so that that button doesn't bring me to the wrong place. I'm going to change this now into uh, insert merge field. This will show me my product. That's good. And then these fields will have to change as well. These do not come from the contacts, but my products table. Um, this will be my product, my description. And then I have to change these as well. But if I want, I can just delete these and then just double click them and create the label. There you go. Now I can just uh, drag this one down. And I've got these blue lines that kind of show up and help me line this thing out. I've got a category and I forgot to check this one, create label, yes. What else do I have? I've got a gender and I create label. I've got my purchase price. Actually, I could have used my um, field picker to just add everything at the same time. That might have even been handier. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do that. That's a bit more. That's actually what it's there for. So I'm going to choose my field picker. Take all of my fields right here, and even my picture fields. And let's just throw them on here. There you go. That's a bit quicker. This one is still here from my contacts. And in fact, maybe we can just keep that one here. That way it's on um, in the same position on the layout. So I can go to products, picture. OK, that's good. And then this one gets to go. <coughs> OK, I've got a price here and a price there. I like to line those out to the uh, right. And then I'm going to go in my data tab here. And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom and say that this is a currency. And I want to see a fixed number of decimals. This can be a dollar sign right here. And then I can kind of choose what it needs to look like, like something like this. And my negative can be red, but I'm not going to have any negative uh, prices, I hope, because that wouldn't be good for business. And then I can use a thousand separator if I want, if my prices go that high. Thousand separator can be a period, for instance. 
Okay, this looks good. Let's have a little look here. Let's make a new record and let's try something. Um, let's insert a picture and let's see what we've got. I've got an Angry Bird shoe here. That's good. Product is Angry Bird shoe. And then a description. Uh, red sneaker. The category shoes. Gender. Okay, a few things here. The category we're probably going to want to not have to manually type these categories because then we will have typos and that's going to be wrong. The gender is also something where we either choose male or female so we're going to want to um, make this a little bit easier as well. So let's go into edit layout and let's go first to our category and let's say we would like to turn this into a drop down list. The values need to come from, well not, not none of these, I'm going to create a new one and let's say that we want to be able to manually enter a category unless if that category already exists it needs to be kind of auto filled in from the categories that exist already in the table so I'm going to use uh, values from fields I'm going to use products and I'm going to use category so that will include all the values that I've uh, of all the categories that I've got in my products table and then if we hit OK a couple of times, we can choose here to autocomplete using value list. If we do that, then I can uh, have my shoes here. And if I make a new record, I can maybe insert picture and have another shoe. This apparently is a boat shoe. I have no idea why. Description is a fancy shoe. And my category, if I enter there, it kind of gives me my drop down and it already tells me shoes. But if I would start typing ahead, shoes, FileMaker is already going to suggest that immediately. And then I can hit my tab to go to the next field. And uh, therefore, I have taken the same category as the, the, uh, the, the one that exists already. Okay, let's uh, do the same thing for gender. Let's make this a radio button set. A radio button set is one where you can select one value. A checkbox set is where you can select multiple values. So let's use the radio button set. Let's make a new one for male and female. This one is male, female. That's a very simple one and it, you can see immediately right here that it looks like that. So you have your male and female field so you can select whichever one you want and then you've got your purchase price. Now I don't know how much shoes cost. Let's make a simple number 50 and then we can see um, this is not going entirely well. Let's have a look here. Maybe it's because it's a period and it's supposed to be a comma. That's better, but this calculation is not going entirely correct yet. Let's go to File, Manage, Database, and go to our sales price calculation. And actually, it's correct. It's uh, the pur purchase price plus the purchase price multiplied by the markup. Let's see if that works any better. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. You can always test it by using a very simple number. 100 plus 10 percent is 110 dollars so that's good and in fact let's keep that for our sneakers um, so one thing we do have to change going back to file manage database we do have to make sure that this uh, markup gets entered correctly and uses a comma instead of a period because the period is usually the thousand separator and that's why uh, that's not going to work and if we have any existing records then that 0.1 is still going to be in there now this 0.1 doesn't look very good. What we can do is we can select this one, go into data, go down to percent, and then we can see, uh, this looks kind of good, I think. Then we can see it. it is displayed now as a percentage, but you do have to pay attention every time you go in there and you want to change it. You can, for instance, change it to 0.2 or 0.2, then it becomes 20%, and for instance, 0.01, makes it 1% so you do have to kind of be careful that you um, change those correctly and you can see if we go in here and we change it to 0 0.01 then that changes the sales price 
All right, good. This is a good start for our um, for our product. So let's see what we're going to do next. <laughs> 